WTVQ. Hello, my name is Marina Case from the Red Shutters, a full-service antiques, decorating, and design company in Warwick, New York, on Railroad Avenue, just across from the train station. Warwick is about an hour north of New York City and is a wonderful place to visit with many restaurants, shops, and a farmer's market every Sunday during the growing season. At the Red Shutters, we serve our clients every day to introduce style, taste, and help them make great decisions. We are here today on The Style Show, a show about decorating, fashion, and fun. We welcome you and encourage your friends to listen. They can log in from their computer at www.wtbq.com, or they can call us in with questions at 845-651-1110. Joining me is my co-host today, Jude Hammerly. Thank you. And in a minute, we're going to speak with the design director of ben- color and design director of Benjamin Moore. Uh, but first, I want to mention uh, we always encourage our, our listeners to attend local events that relate to design and fashion. And one coming uh, that's currently on exhibition at the Met until January is the Interwoven Global Show. And we strongly encourage you to check that out, especially if you have any interest in fabrics or textiles. Uh, the, it's an outstanding show going back thousands of years with examples of of um, fine embroidery, uh, damasks, uh, toiles, all sorts of great things, which I think will be um, very much setting the trends for fabrics in the future. It's a great show, and if you're in the city at the Met, I encourage you to definitely to visit it. Also, I want to uh, encourage you to start planning your calendar for next year. We have workshops coming up, and one of them is going to be held at the Ridgewood Public Library in Ridgewood, New Jersey. It's called Your Home is the Story of Your Life. It's a very popular workshop that I do, and it's uh, about incorporating traditional, modern, tribal, and fun elements into your home and reflecting you in that process. So we encourage you to attend that 7 p.m. March 26 at the Ridgewood Public Library in Ridgewood, New Jersey. So I want to welcome uh, Priscilla. Is that you? Hi, how are you? Good. How are you? Thank you so much for being with us here today. Yes, I'm so excited to be here with you. Thank you. Um, We're excited to have you, especially um, from Benjamin Moore. I work with Benjamin Moore Paints, I think, every day with your colors. And I want to talk to you um, and um, in, about uh, telling our listeners what tools they have to use today, especially um, you know as they're going through the painting process, which seems to really stump people. They they think it's great, and I just have to pick a color sort of kind of thing. But really, um, it's not as simple as people think. And I know that Benjamin Moore has gone to great lengths to create tools for them. And I wondered if you could comment on that and talk a little bit about that. Oh, absolutely. So color is very personal. We have lots of tools online on Pinterest, Facebook, and our BenjaminMoore.com website where you can actually pull all the information that I'm actually going to mention today. Um, But when approaching a project, you want to identify first uh, the feeling that you want to um, encompass or capture in that space. So let's say it's a living room or a family room. You want that warm, cozy feeling. And the tools that you have available to you, one of the ones that we just launched was our Color Trends 2014 color card, which is a new direction that we're taking here at Benjamin Moore. Um, It's more of an envelope type of approach of color. So we want these colors that we've presented within this color palette to be livable, um, to be personable, and to be um, complementary to what other elements you already have in the room. So kind of straying away from this bold statement of color, but having a much more lightness to it. And that's how we end up actually selecting our color trends, um, color of the year, which is a breath of fresh air. You know, with so much happening in society, with all the rigmarole that we go through, through commuting, emailing, paying our bills, coming to work, there is this sensibility of wanting to experience things in life and appreciate them for what they are versus getting caught up in the idea of accumulating things and feeling important by things. So we came up with um, a collection of colors that are illustrated in our Color Trends 2014 color palette. There's 23 colors, and there's a lightness about them. There's an airiness about them. And in this lightness and airiness within um, the color selection that we have, it allows the consumer to put them up on the wall, put any one of the colors up on the wall, and feel that um, it would complement or or bring that airiness and lightness to them. The color of the year that we had selected is... um, 
Breath of Fresh Air, and it's number 806. And is that in a fan deck? Or this envelope that you're talking about, is it a fan deck? That How do our, our listeners find this these colors? Um, it's actually it's in our fan deck, and it's also within our um, Color Trends palette. You can go to your local Benjamin Moore dealer and pick one up. You can also work... Uh, excuse me, network, you can actually go to any one of our Benjamin Moore dealers, and we have about 5,000 dealers out there with color consultants that are very, very eager to work with the public on any one of their projects to help them um, select color, to walk them through color. Um, so going back to what I was saying earlier, first you want to identify the feeling of the room. Then you want to identify, okay, what within that feeling of the room, what is the end use? Am I p- painting... Um, a baby's room? Am I painting a room that's going to have high traffic? What are the needs of that room? And then you want to service up to those needs. So prior to selecting a color, you need to pick the actual base of the paint. So what is the product? Is it going to be for a baby's room? So our Natura paint is ideal for Natura, uh, for a baby's room because it has um, zero VOC. Is it something that's going to have high traffic? And um, you know what? You have um, kids that tumble around, so you need something that's a little bit more durable. So maybe you would go with our Regal Select that is a very durable paint. Or maybe it's such an exquisite space that you, you'd like to use our um, Aura paint, where it's just as durable but at a higher price point with other features and, um, and, and um, I'm sorry, I just lost my train of no, thought. No, that's okay. Um, but not only does it have other features, but it has other attributes that would service... Um, but it's a very rich and silky feel, um, and I've even used it in the simplest of rooms, and it really takes on a new dimension, and it's extremely high quality, the aura. And what's so nice about that chart is that the uh, every color works with every other color in that chart. Oh, absolutely. It's interchangeable. When we came up with... Um, these colors, they're not actually brand new colors. If you were to go to any one of our Benjamin Moore stores, you'd see what we've done is curated a collection of colors that work well together that speak to the specific um, feeling that we want to articulate for 2014. I I noticed that you, uh, on Facebook, you posted your main color. Uh, It's called, Will You Marry Me? (laughs) <laughs> Which is kind of funny. Yes, it is. So we, ha- we do have a lot of fun when naming the colors, and, and one of this was, um, actually, I did not name this color. This was pr- named prior to me, but one of the colors is Will You Marry Me? So we do have a lot of fun with the names here. Right, right. Um, I'm interested, how, how did they come up with the Will You? They just released uh, several new fan decks. They are available at the local paint stores, everyone. I want you to know even our local Waitsons here in Warwick has them. And um, I know that it looks like you put a lot of effort into the Williamsburg charts. Are you familiar with how they came up with those colors? Yes, I am. Um, so with Williamsburg specifically, we went out to Williamsburg, Virginia, and we looked at their actual heritage. Being that technology is evolving, we're now um, not just us at Benjamin Moore, but all the museums across the world. You know, I heard you talking about the Met and other exhibits in New Jersey, but we're now looking, the art community as a whole, is looking at what is happening with regards to um, the art as it ages. So with a spectrophotometer, which is the same device that is used in all of our Benjamin Moore stores, they're looking to see what was the original painting of a Van Gogh? What was the original painting of Mona Lisa? Was it a true red? What was the pure color of that? And with this technology, we're able to identify what were the true colors that represented Williamsburg, specifically at Williamsburg, Virginia. So all of those colors in that sand deck and in that color card are brand new colors that we've introduced into our Benjamin Moore portfolio that are exclusively made um, with Benjamin Moore paint. Um, only sold at Benjamin Moore retailers. So the science that took place behind that and the team, really, they took a lot of time to really pay tribute with the um, historical society, with the entire team down in Williamsburg. My um, VP, Carl Minshew, who's the head of color innovation and design here, he's actually a chemist and has a chemistry degree. So there was so so much time and effort and research that was placed to curating what those colors would look like, truly capturing those colors. There are some colors that are in there that are very bright, and they're, you know, 
we've had uh, customers come into the showroom and say, oh my gosh, these were actually part of Williamsburg. Yes, they were. Right. The, the colors are very bright historically. And I think that's in part because so much of our history comes from England where the light is much dimmer. And mm-hmm. so in the English country homes, and that's very much part of uh, our history in decorating, there was a need to create brightness. So as it came to the States, that trend kind of lagged on and continued in the United States. So you had, and for example, you know, even at Mount Vernon, this very bright colors. And in many of our historic homes, these very bright, overly bright colors almost. Um, and even down at uh, Thomas Jefferson's Monticello, you see the same thing. Right. They were peeling paint off the last time I was down at Monticello. And... Um, they had gotten down to the original color in the dining room, and even the curators were somewhat surprised what a astonishingly bright yellow it was. Priscilla, are you there? Yes, yes. Oh, there you are. Um, and we're, yeah, we're also working right now in the first governor of New Jersey's home. That's one of my projects, Liberty Hall. And there we recently chose a Benjamin Moore color, a, a one that I use uh, often, and it's Concord Ivory. So, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that the historic colors that Benjamin Moore really has done a great job with them uh, in terms of, you know, t- taking the time. And to see that new Williamsburg chart is very exciting because having worked in historic restoration projects, uh, there's really a lot lack of resources for designers today. You know, in the third period, which was, say, 1976, there was a huge colonial revival, and there was a lot, a lot to work with in the late 70s, 80s, and even into the 90s. But lately, because of the modern trends, we've lost resources to be able to work with in these historic projects, and it's very frustrating. So to see Benjamin Moore you know, introduce these Williamsburg charts, to see the Metropolitan Museum uh, doing this interwoven global show with documents that are reviving the importance of historic documents um, is very exciting to a designer who is you know, working on historic projects now, and then we do all kinds of projects, but that's one of them. And it's important to understand history and colors to be able to do your projects. Um, they kind of, you know, they, they weave themselves through all your projects. So uh, we're very pleased about that. Priscilla, yeah. maybe you could put paint in context with other ways of covering your walls. Uh, you, you think, uh, um, I, I think from what you've said very, very clearly about paint, and you also speak very almost romantically about paint. Paint is not the only choice um, that a consumer has, and we try to make uh, uh, a consumer's conscious of all their choices on the show and also in, in the process of decorating. So, you know, you can upholster walls, you can cover them with fabric, you can use wallpaper, you can use natural wallpapers like grass cloth and what have you. Given that those are all, you know, actual competitors of paint, how do the people at Ben Benjamin Moore and you, in in particular, conceive paint as uh, a, a, you know as an a, attempt to make it a very effective competitor against these other uh, sorts of coverings. What are your you know the primary virtues of paint, and and how do you go about bringing them to life in in your product line? Okay, so um, not only do we research what happens in regards to the history when we were doing Williamsburg, the history of. Uh, what took place in Williamsburg and what was actually there, but in all the work that we do, and in fact, in curating this color palette and as we go forward, we go to different shows. Like we've gone to um, Salon di Mobile in Milan. We've gone to uh, Maison in Paris. And we research to see who are the innovators out in the marketplace. Right. Those are the cities where it all starts, actually. Right. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So we look at what's happening in those markets, and then we need to be able to identify how did, would that translate into paint? How would that translate into... Um, um, our world. So the, one of the biggest influences that we all walked away with and uh, various team members went to uh, various shows was a pottery designer. Her name was Rena Minardi. Um, she did beautiful handcrafted pottery that was refined and um, using a flat color um, finish in her pottery. So this idea of a flat mat is something that we had picked up on here at Benjamin Moore, and that was very important. Then further to that, all right, what other industries are now using this? How are they articulating and applying color? So we're not just looking at walls. Yes, we need to translate it into walls, and I'm going to get to answer your question in just a moment, but I'm leading here because then you look at what's happening in the marketplace of automobiles. So with automobiles right now, whether it be Lexus or, you know, I think the first person that actually got some um, press around this was – Justin Bieber, 
when he did a matte black car right after he got his license plate. Now everybody's like, how do you do that? Now it's part of the portfolio, I believe, or an option with, um, with Land Rover. So this matte finish. So when we were enticed by um, Rena Minardi's pottery, started looking to see how other things are applicable. So to your question about how do we compete with the wallpapers and all the other areas of the world, for us, our vision is how do we express in a visual manner through our presentations, through our marketing collateral, um, color with texture because you don't necessarily need to add um, this bold, you know, paisley to the wall. Yes, you can celebrate that in your home and there's nothing wrong with it, but we would invite our consumers, our designers, and our architects that we have um, done business with all throughout the years to start playing with the actual sheen of our paint. So look at the levels. How does it attract? There's so many other elements that we can now um, mitigate in our home. For example, the light. So do I have a, a high gloss? Do I do a matte? Can I do different levels of and use one color, three different finishes in a room to add texture? It doesn't have to be this bold color. It doesn't have to be, you know, this layering of prints, this excessiveness um, in design and interiors where there's this collector's mentality. I think more and more what I'd invite everyone listening to today is to keep a pulse and their eyes open for opportunities how things are paring down and it's becoming much simpler. We want to do a lot more with less. Um, we want to appreciate people for who they are and the time that they have than collecting these things. So how we're competing with them is changing the view of how we are, our consumer um, interacts with paint how they can add texture to the room and being that much more detail-oriented in the expression of paint. So they don't need to be a Van Gogh. They don't need to do some fancy technique. You can use solid colors, different sheens, and appreciating the architecture within your home. Um, and we have actual beautiful uh, Photo photographs that we collaborated with Kohler. And if you were to pick up, I think, at one of um, our Benjamin Moore stores, you can go to either a Kohler showroom or a Benjamin Moore retailer and view this catalog that we, was just launched, I think it was um, a month ago. Um, and look at the imagery. You will see how color is captured with high gloss because there's a whole trend with high gloss using our advanced paint specifically that captures that durability and that mirror shine, if you want to achieve that type of look, to our flat. There's no longer this idea of, oh, I have to have a semi-gloss or a shine in my bathroom, and then the condensation of water, you know, dribbles down the wall and it looks like I didn't clean. The technology that we have at Benjamin Moore allows, whether it be a matte paint or a high-gloss paint for our bath and spa, to condensate into pebbles and then evaporate naturally into the air without leaving that effect of, um, hey, I need to wipe that down with Windex or it doesn't look like I've cleaned today because I took a shower. Wow. <laughs> so if I, if I were to summarize your answer, which I thought was excellent, um, it's, um, I mean, let's just say for the consumer who believes that, that paint is a very simple and or limited a solution, um, you know, a, a trip to the Benjamin Moore retailer or to a decorator that could take her to a Benjamin Moore um, retailer would uh, indicate that, you know, paint is actually, especially Benjamin Moore paint, becoming more complex and yet easy to use um, with a richer variety of options and, um, you know, a, a, an overall sort of technical approach to something that that um, is apparently, uh, you know, cut and dried and non-technical. Yeah, yes, absolutely. And then I, I would, you know, if, if it's still difficult or challenging for people to relate to what I'm saying, I would say, look, think of it how you get dressed every day. Okay, or when you go shopping for something. It doesn't matter if you, you love fashion or you don't. When you're buying something, you're buying, you're, uh, you know, a knit, or is it a woven? It, then you're layering in the color. So that's your base. So that's your paint. What am I painting? A bathroom, a kitchen? Like, what is the end use of it? Is it to go to the gym? Is it to go to work? Then it's, okay, what color do I want it in it? So I need a white shirt or I need a white wall. Okay, so then you add your color. And then, okay, do I want it to be shiny? Do I want it to be matte? And to what degree and what level? It's no different than getting dressed to go to work and putting your outfit together as it is to decorate the interior of your home. And you can really pare it down to that simplicity. And if you look at it from that lens, it helps take away some of that noise of, like, where do I begin? I'm kind of lost in this process of selecting a color or picking a paint. 
So Priscilla, you and I were having fun. Um, the, recently, I want to let our listeners know that at the D&D building in New York, which is our local design source for um, fabrics, wallpapers, and all sorts of great design elements, and uh, Benjamin more recently opened a showroom at the D&D building, which is very cool. And you and I were shooting our dresses with this new device that you have. What is the name of that device? Remind me, it's a scanner. Um, yes. I'm sorry, you broke up a little. So I wasn't the, sure uh, your question, we were we were shooting our dresses at the D and D building with the scanning device. What do you call that? Um, okay, so that's a capture device. That capture device is something that we partnered with with um, X Right um, to be able to. So it comes preloaded. So it's a handheld device that bounces light off of an object to read the actual DNA of color, and it comes preloaded with every single fan deck of the. Uh, Benjamin Moore, so every single one of our colors. So if you're an interior designer, yeah, uh, if you're an interior designer um, and you have, let's say, a throw pillow or a fabrication and it has some type of a print and you want to draw out a feeling of color or a tonality within a color, you would take this device, um, which you can actually use in our um, showrooms. We're going to be rolling it out um, to San Francisco and Chicago as well, but you can come to our New York showroom and be able to use this as well. You place it over the um, fabrication, making sure that there's no other light emitting through from the back side. You snap it just as if you would snap a picture with your iPhone. It reads it, and then it will tell you the closest Benjamin Moore match to that color to help you identify or distinguish a color. It can also give you complementing colors, so it can give you a color harmony. So if you wanted you know, ideas for what other colors you can introduce in that room or that space that would allow it to um, bring life and beauty to it, or it can give you different levels of what that color is. So when you're decorating the room, it's so important to know the different tones of your color. So the t- what is the cast of your floor? What is the cast of, you know, what is the feature in the room? Is it the sofa that's the biggest thing? Is it a lamp? Is it a piece of art? How do you want to complement that? Um, it was amazing to me. I mean, I was wearing a Diane von Furstenberg wrap dress with an animal print, and it picked right up on the background color. It was incredible. And I think you were wearing a paisley, and it picked that up. Yes, it's very good. It's a very good device. Um, we are actually able to purchase that um, I believe online and through our retailers. I don't have that information with me, but oh, I Oh, so it's going to be in something you can purchase. Yes, it will be a product that you will be able to purchase as a designer. For for the consumer, they're able to purchase that versus purchasing the fan deck, but know that it's um, a little bit more expensive than uh, a typical fan deck that runs about 15 to 20 dollars. Um, right. There is a color capture app that is online right now. You can get that from iTunes. Um, we are working on evolving what that app would look like and how you can interact with that. But this device is not just being used in the paint industry, it's also being used in the makeup industry. So if you were to go to Sephora, they have the same exact capture device filled with different information with regards to getting your makeup. So it's something definitely of the future that you should definitely keep an eye out for and become more familiar with. Okay, great. We're going to have to wrap up soon. I, I want to mention, you know, I attended the um, at the New York Design Center, the Color Trending, you know, uh, workshop. Benjamin Moore was there. And, uh, you know, just to talk about quickly the blues that are coming on trend. Uh, Van Dusen blue is a big color and grays with tones in it and so forth. So we're excited about that. And you can go onto our blog on the Red Shutters and see um, all the latest colors. What's new, what's next at the New York Design Center is the name of the blog, www.theredshutters.com. Dot com and take a look at that. And uh, we appreciate, Priscilla, your being with us today and explaining um, you know, all of the new things that are happening with Benjamin Moore. It's very exciting, the sheens, the, the, uh, the tools that our, our listeners can use. And um, that's, it's uh, you know, a, a great thing that, uh, that's happening with color and paint. Yeah, I'm happy to have had uh, the opportunity to speak with you. The local store, I believe, in your area is uh, Watson Home Center for Benjamin Moore. It's on 60 uh, Forrester Avenue on Warwick, New York. That's right. Yeah, we all go there all the time, and we uh, pick up those paint strips that uh, I encourage our listeners to uh, to use they, they and keep their colors close rather than going all over the fan deck. I see that a lot when I go on color consultation. So, um, and they have all the strips there. Yeah. You can also order online for free um, through our website. You can order it through Fulfillment America. Oh, great. Okay. And that's, uh, what's the website? 
It's www.benjaminmore.com, and then you just type in um, color chips. And it'll lead you to a link that will then take you to a place where you're going to be able to order any one of the color chips for free and have it delivered to your home. Okay, great. Priscilla, thanks so much for being with us. And uh, thank you for joining us to our listeners today on The Style Show. Thank you.